All right, welcome. So in this video, we're going to look at Gauss-Jordan elimination, and I'm actually going to split this video or this example into two parts. The first part, we're just going to go over what Gauss-Jordan elimination is, why it's important, how we set it up, and a little review of reduced row echelon form. And in the second part, we're going to actually perform elementary row operations to try to get our matrix into reduced row echelon form and solve this system of linear equations. So we're already pretty familiar with what Gaussian elimination is, and that is simply a way to obtain a row equivalent matrix in row echelon form. And Gauss-Jordan is a way to obtain a matrix that is in reduced row echelon form. And the special thing about Gauss-Jordan elimination and reduced row echelon form is that the values in the last column of our matrix are our solution for the system of linear equation. So that's pretty cool. So here I have a system of linear equations all in green. And the very first thing we want to do when we perform Gauss-Jordan elimination is write out the augmented matrix for this system of linear equations. So let's go ahead and do that now. And remember, the augmented matrix consists of the coefficient matrix of all the coefficients of the unknown variables on the left-hand side, as well as all the constants on the right-hand side. So for our first column, we have a 1, a 3, and a 2. So 1, 3, and 2. On our second column, we have 2, 1, and 7. 2, 1, and 7. In our third column, we have negative 3, negative 7, and negative 3. Negative 3, negative 7, and negative 3. And I'm going to go ahead and draw in this dashed line just so I can separate the coefficients from the constants. And on our final column, we have a 12, a 24, and a 27. So 12, 24, and 27. So there we go. That is our augmented matrix. That is the matrix where we're going to be performing our elementary row operations in order to get this into reduced row echelon form. As a quick review of what reduced row echelon form is, I wrote out this white matrix as an example to kind of explain the different rules of what makes a matrix reduced row echelon form. So the first rule of a matrix that is in reduced row echelon form is that all coefficient or all zero coefficient rows are at the bottom of the matrix. So here we see a row consisting entirely of zeros and it's at the very bottom of this matrix. The second rule is that all other rows have a leading one. So all other rows above the rows consisting entirely of zeros, the first non-zero element has to be a positive one. So in this first row, we have a zero, and then we encounter our first non-zero element, which is a positive one, so that's good. In our second row, we have a zero, a zero, and a one. So the first non-zero element that we encounter is a positive 1. And then we have our row of 0. The third rule is that leading 1s are at least one space to the right of the leading 1 above it. So if we look at the second row, we have this leading 1 in the third column. And that is at least one space to the right of the leading 1 above it. So the leading 1 above it is in the second column, whereas this leading 1 is in the third column. If this leading 1 was right underneath the leading one above it, then this would not be in reduced row echelon form. And finally, every column that contains a leading one has zeros above and below it. So in this first column, we don't have any leading one terms, so that's okay. In this second column, we have a leading one, and all the elements below it are zero. In this third column, we have a leading one here, and we have a zero above it and below it. So that's good. In our third row, it doesn't really matter because this is the row consisting entirely of zero. So we're really only concerned with the values above the rows that are all zeros. So now that we got that out of the way, we can actually start performing elementary row operations to convert this augmented matrix into an equivalent matrix that is in reduced row echelon form. And remember, we have three rules or three elementary row operations that we can use on any matrix to convert it into an equivalent matrix. So the first one is that we can interchange rows. So we can switch any row with any other row. The second one is that we can take one row and add to it a multiple of another row, and that will give us our new row. The third rule is that we can multiply a non-zero constant throughout every element of a row. And these three rules will all yield matrices that are equivalent to matrices before 
it. So remember, Gauss-Jordan elimination is a really cool process where we can convert a matrix into an equivalent matrix that is in reduced row echelon form. And when we do that, the very last column is our solution set for all the unknown variables. So in this example of this white matrix, this entire matrix is in reduced row echelon form. And if we look at this last column here, the values 3 and 2, and I guess 0, would be our solution set to the system of linear equations. Not the green ones that I've drawn here. Remember, this is just a separate example just to kind of illustrate a matrix being in reduced row echelon form. So at this point, I'm going to actually jump into the second part. But before I do that, I encourage you to try getting this augmented matrix into reduced row echelon form while performing these three elementary row operations. Now, the second part will be fairly lengthy, but if you get stuck trying to do this yourself or if you want to check your answer, go ahead and jump to the second part. All right, see you then.